Hey there, welcome to a brand new episode of Music Express. My name is Twan and in this week's vlog you will see my interview with Jonas Steur in which he shares the story behind Fall Two Pieces, a beautiful vocal trance track which he did together with singer-songwriter Jennifer Renee. But before we start with the interview, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and very important, also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. All right, here it is, the story behind Fall to Pieces, my interview with Jonas Steur. Enjoy. Jonas Steur is active in the music scene for a long time already. The DJ and producer from Belgium is releasing music for more than 20 years under names such as Estuera, Global Killer, Fable, Evil Robot, Timebender and also under his own name Jonas Steur. In the year 2007, Jonas released Fall to Pieces, a beautiful vocal trance track for which he worked together with Jennifer Renee. For this week's vlog I sat down with Jonas to ask him about the story behind this classic. My first question to him was how he got in touch with Jennifer. Hmm. So that's the uh, social media days when it was just still all starting out. Uh, MySpace is <laughs> what we have to talk about. So MySpace used to be uh, before there was Facebook. We had MySpace, which uh, was basically the same, though less less algorithm bullshit, more just follow it while well, following people and having fans, something like that. It was actually a very interesting platform for musicians because indeed it was seemed to kind of really work to have fans follow your profile and you could basically put anything there and they would see it immediately it was not like a timeline where you could only get whatever the algorithm decided it was just um so lots of people were on there i, I think everyone that was at least in the the music scene and the music scene in general i think but certainly the trance scene was uh, on my space um at that time, we are talking about 2005 or 6, I think. I think it's 6. I had um, the second intuition release, the uh, second turn, Solisa. And uh, second turn was played a lot by Armin. Um, Jennifer was listening a lot to Armin. And suddenly I got a message on my space of a certain Jennifer Rene. Uh, saying like, oh yeah, this is a really cool dark track, second turn. I was like, yeah, okay, nice. I checked who is this person actually, uh, and I noticed, ah, oh, this is she had a track. She she was also doing music. She had a track with um, um, Jose Amnesia, louder. I think that was the first release uh, Jennifer ever did. It was. Just a few sentences, actually, but a very, yeah, quite a, a unique voice, certainly for trance. She's, she has this uh, quite pop sounding voice, really nice uh, and louder, was really completely made by what she did with the vocals. I thought it was like, this is interesting. Um, and at that time, I was. Um, starting to do my first artist album, Born for the Night. Um, and I wanted to do vocal tracks on it as well. And I was like, yeah, why not ask if she maybe wants to uh, do something? So I asked and she said, yeah, of course. Um, so that's how we got in touch. Um, then for the track itself, maybe that's a question, that's your next question anyways. Um, so I had the idea to start the album with this very specific intro track where um, the synth melody, or well, at least where the, 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 the music kind of comes from the depth, from the deep, from far beyond, from somewhere far away, getting closer and closer and closer until you're in your, it's here in your face and then the beats drop in and the album started. I thought it would be really cool to have a track like that also for DJ sets uh, afterwards uh, but mainly because it's a, an album not just uh, a, a release uh, on vinyl so 
it doesn't matter if you can mix it. It's mostly something you want to listen. If you put it on in your car or at home, it would be cool to have uh, an intro. Right? So I had a track ID in mind. The track was called Escapism uh, at that point. And it basically already was the chords of Fault of Pieces. So um, I had the VSTi version of the Korg M1, which nowadays I have the real version of. So, <laughs> So back in the days, back in 2006, this would be on my computer screen, the virtual version, but uh, the virtual version is actually sounding exactly the same as the real one. Um, so I recreated the preset I used back in the days on uh, my actual M1. And the idea was to have to start with full on reverb like this, very wet reverb. And then slowly come Closer and closer, like... And then you're there, and then you kick in, and that is the full melody, like... Uh, uh, something like this. Got some bit too dry. bit rusty but that was the idea so i had that going the intro uh with the the chords coming from far away close uh, and i made a full track around that uh, which was an instrumental track um called escapism and i thought that would be the intro track finished and then around that same time i got indeed in touch with jennifer through myspace which uh myspace which i just uh, mentioned and i was like Maybe that could be interesting with Vogel as well. It's like, well, no, there's nothing to lose. I had actually a couple of other tracks that I was producing, especially for vocals. This one, I was like, yeah, maybe it's difficult because it was in... Yeah, it was never made with uh, in mind with that, that it would uh, be in her range or something. Which was actually indeed a problem because we had to... The original version was in the lower key uh, than the final version. I had to go up a little bit because her vocal range was... It would sound nicer if she could sound, uh, sing a little bit higher. Easy to fix. So I sent her the instrumental. And didn't take too long, I think. I got um, quite an interesting thing back. I didn't get uh, like a clean... Uh, recorded uh, dry vocal or something. I got her playing on her own keyboard. I'm not sure what she was using, which was basically just a piano sound. She was playing like the chords, uh, something like. Uh something like that, those chords over and over. And then she was uh, singing which was most of the vocals that ended up in fall to pieces not everything was there yet but certainly the first verse uh, and it was just like plate freehand singing to not in the right tempo or anything so i couldn't immediately put it in the track but it was like this is really a song i was like she, she actually wrote a proper song i can we could make anything of this it doesn't have to even have to be dance it's just like way more than I expected. Uh, so I was really, really happy and enthusiastic about it, which I of, of course immediately told her, but I also I was sharing it with everyone I knew, like, listen to this. Like, I said, oh, and this is really sad. This is going to be the first try of the album. They were like, okay, <laughs> interesting. It's like, it wasn't there. I said, how, can I, I, how cool is this going to be? It sounds, it sounded already like magic, almost it that like, completely transformed my whole ID. First, the album would have been like probably some Estevera in Sarah Sunrise like just lots of melodic trance which would could have been nice but now suddenly it was actually a, a, a song that could go way beyond uh, what I was thinking about. Uh, and then it was just a matter of getting it to work in the song because that was the thing. I had the demo but I could, which is so unfortunate that I can't find it anymore. I was really looking uh, for it before you came here. If I 
still could fight that first demo version, but probably lost somewhere uh, in on an old hard drive. Um, then she recorded the vocals properly with some extra parts because I requested, can you uh, sing a second verse? Um, because, well, you have the meaning of reason as the first verse and then it would, it would already go I don't want to know, I don't want to fall to pieces, but I was like, this is too soon, I want another part, which is also pretty, I think that's it maybe the, the coolest part, uh, she wrote some pretty great vocals, some gr nice text for it, um, so she wrote that as well, and then recorded it in the original key, which was lower, and then it was nice, but she, yeah, it didn't work that well, because she couldn't have reached the full power I think because uh, her her voice was a little bit higher so I said no problem transpose the whole thing <laughs> resend it she recorded it because I have actually the two full versions two full packages of the dry vocals the original key and a new recording that was a little bit higher which I actually discovered today that I still had the original one as well I was like what is this I'm like what this is sound low it's um, doesn't sound that bad actually, but I, the final version is better. Um, what also was really cool about that, and not an intended thing at all, is she was just starting out. This was our first, well, this was her second uh, track she was doing, I think. She didn't really have a lot of proper recording equipment. I'm, I'm not sure what kind of microphone she used, but it was... Certainly nothing uh, high, very high quality, I think. That was great. It sounded a little bit uh, lo-fi, but the way when I put it in the mix and I added a little bit of reverb and delay, it sounded so much more interesting. It wasn't maybe a very hi-fi, but it wasn't sounding bad as well. It was actually, I think I, I, nowadays I would on purpose make it sound like that uh, um, so I put that in the track I added I, then I think I built the track a little bit further because you had the parts where um, well the piano was already in the track like uh, something like this eh? a really difficult key that's a problem when you have to play it in the key that you didn't uh, write it in. But, uh, well, I had that piano part, I think it was. That's it, yeah. Whatever. Um, but then I also put that piano on top of the chords that you got uh, this. Uh, uh, it's a bit lower. That's the climax of the song, and then it all came together. So you had the vocals and the break, and then that piano added the final layer yeah. of magic. And then all the way in the end of the vocals, she was you know, doing some ad libs, just like, and then all the way at the end, she's like, just go. Like, I was like almost renaming the track to be Just Go, oh. because it sounded so. It was such a nice transition, and then because that was my whole day, okay, now in the album, I can go out of this track and then go in the second track, which was Nightwalker in the album, which was really made to immediately kick in and mm -hmm. uh, and raise the energy there again. It, it, yeah, it, all the, everything started to came come together really nicely, um, and then yeah, it's. Uh, was actually just a matter of, well, I don't know. I, I think there was nothing problematic about getting this site or something. It was yeah, <laughs> just a pretty good track. Although it wasn't that technically, there's still in the real original version, and I think I'm not sure if that's still the one that is on the streaming platforms, but the the. 
first version I made in the break where she's going like, I don't want to fall to pieces, like a big plop on the pee because it wasn't, record wasn't recorded that uh, great. And I kind of forgot to oh, <laughs> filter it out. <laughs> So it was, so it was so and and also it it wasn't auto tuned or anything so it's really a very raw, uh, but yeah, a bit fragile sounding yeah. recording that was used. But I think that's all part of of the magic of uh, of that track. Her voice is amazing. Yeah. And yes, indeed, you can yeah. cannot say anything bad about that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so so what kind of equipment did you use for this one? So uh, it was. Um, mostly all software um, at that point I started to really get into the the Korg Legacy Cell collection which nowadays I have the real collection of it was the MS-20, the M1, the Poly-6 um, so these are indeed used the, they, they are basically the main sounds you have the M1 which is the chords the Poly-6 is under there as a second layer also playing those chords there was this piano sample. It's not not this one, but it was something that sounded quite similar. Uh, don't know where I used it, where I got it from, but it's just a piano. Um, and then probably some other synths like the albino is, was something that I used back in the days, and the atmosphere, the Spectrosonics atmosphere for the the pads in the in the break. Uh, but not that much for the rest. It's um, samples for the beats just kick hi-hat claps and a couple of loops that i uh cut up quite heavily uh, and it's actually it has this interesting um stop go rhythm it has this uh, and i think it was a sample from uh actually it's, it's a house track speed garage track that has this very house housey drum loop and the way i use it in the track it really goes like it's, uh, it always has this stop moment, kind of new, the, my stop go beat, I call it. Mm -hmm. It's just adding those elements, but those were just audio elements, uh, samples. Um, so they are quite heavily processed, all of them, but it wasn't so, yeah, well, I could, could have come from anywhere. Just percussion loops, that kind of stuff. And that's it. I mean, there's actually not that much going on in the track. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, I think... But if I only use the piano and the vocal, it could also have been <laughs> really yes, yeah, yeah. because it was really standing on its own already. So, yeah. so did it take you like long to finish the track? Uh, yeah. So indeed, because of the uh, issues we had with the key, I kind of had to do a few versions. So it was not the fastest projection ever, but it also wasn't that difficult. But yeah, you gotta say it was a few phases. First, I made. The original track Escapism, which was an instrumental, which already had quite a lot of the uh, elements, but not like the piano drop mm -hmm. and such yet. Then the first demo version with Jennifer in the original key. Then we pitched it up. Uh, well, Jennifer just sang it in her good voice and I uh, made the key higher. And then... I think I had to tweak a little bit there. I made a, um, the extended version as well, which starts with uh, the gig so that you can also mix it yeah, in. Yeah. Um, so all of that, I think every time it took a few days probably to really get there. Not sure how long it took in total. It wasn't super long and it was not, never really difficult or problematic, but it was just, I was just figuring out how to uh, solve some of the problems that you suddenly get when you are working with a real instrument. Well, no, synthesizers are real instruments. I'm never going to say they are not. But synthesizers are instruments that do... They listen to your computer. They listen to what you are doing with your, with your fingers. If you're working with uh, a singer, you suddenly have to accept that you have to adapt your music to the voice of the singer, to the lyrics, to uh, the way, uh, so that it, really, that it works yeah. together in the, the best way possible. I think a big mistake that sometimes is made is kind of 
make a vocal track, which was done quite a lot back in the days that, oh, we're going to do a vocal trance track now. And then like, okay, uh, where are we going to put the vocal? Well, we always have this intro part where you basically have a kick and some percussion and then an offbeat bass that goes straight. Mm -hmm. Just sing something over there. Then you get vocals that sound like that. So unbelievable true sometimes it even still works and you get really good vocals mm -hmm. and sometimes you really hear like it's a monotone yeah there was nothing for the singer to work with there was no harmonic content nothing interesting uh, that she that she or he could use to trigger some uh, some ideas of their own I think the good thing with Fold of was that it was already quite harmonically rich. It has pretty, uh, the, the chord progression goes really fast. Mm -hmm. So you have to sing and follow along the chords. And then you get this very melodic uh, line uh, that I think not only because, uh, it's it's not only the melody that comes out of it, but I think also that starts to give the lyrics another level because you can suddenly, uh, kind of follow the ups and downs of the melody mm -hmm. which are with the lyrics as well which is uh, things I had to figure out because it was um, the first track with vocals that I did from scratch like that I, I used to work with vocals before but it was always remixes and then it's it's easier you always have a perfect good recording of the vocals and you just do your own new thing with it and see whatever works but you don't have to worry about how is it recorded and are these lyrics okay and should do we need an R part or is yeah. the, the is this uh, timing not is it okay and is it all those extra things you certainly have to worry about um but it was a it was a great experience and i think for the <laughs> First one like that that I did was yeah. pretty. Yeah, that like it's your first vocal track, yeah. And, yeah, and actually the most successful vocal yeah. track as well. Yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, this track was. Yeah, I mean, you, you never met Jennifer before, so do you recall meeting her for the first time? Yes, I think the first time I met her in person was um, in Rotterdam. Um, I think it was an Armin only event, something like that. It was something Armin, and she was going there because at that time she also started to do some stuff for Armin uh, I think for his album and Almada um, so she was going there and I was like hey rather them it's not that far I'll jump in the car and we get some coffee before so we can finally meet because that was already almost a year later uh, oh wow yeah, yeah it uh, took quite, quite a long time and then I also met her um, one or two times so, oh, so when she was in usually when she was visiting uh, the Netherlands I think she was a trans energy she also had to perform at also an Armin only event I think uh, because she then had the track with Armin I usually came and fit and then we just yes. had a drink and but never really uh yeah besides that we've never been actually in the studio together yeah. which is actually <laughs> really yeah, strange um so yeah fold the pieces also came out as a single but uh, the track did appear on the b side of the record instead of the a side so, so what do we have here a nice black and white record that says born for the night and it's only here that you see in very small letters fold the pieces so why was this done? I'm not 100% sure <laughs> anymore, but I think the strategy, I, it's kind of, I, maybe this is what happened. The album was going to happen and the album was called Born for the Night. The title track Born for the Night is one of the tracks in the middle of the album, which is a bit quite a, a typical track for me, actually an atypical track for me, not strange thing actually is and, and actually nowadays I don't think I would make a single out of it but we were like okay we use that as the title track so then if this uh, and then fold the pieces on there as well that if that becomes a hit then immediately people will have Born for the Night in their mind in their mind as well and it kind of promotes the album I think nowadays we would simply just release fold the pieces because it most obviously isn't the b-side it's like maybe the biggest a-side i ever made so but it was yeah and it's still really funny i mean nowadays if you are looking for it on spotify you suddenly see this black and white cover pop up and you're like what is this the wrong track or 
Um, it's yeah, strange decisions. Although it didn't really, I think, don't think it hurt. The, the vinyl still sold. The album uh, did what it did, and uh, the the single, well, the track full pieces had was it like forgotten because it was the yeah, B side. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, it just so did the uh, future full pieces on uh, in search of Sunrise Six uh, Ibiza CD. Uh, do you recall finding out that he was going to put it on a CD? Um, so yeah, at that point in Sir Sunrise, I was kind of the local resident uh, because I already had on uh, four and five, I had a couple of tracks. Um, so I wasn't really uh, th that much aware that six was coming because I was in the middle. I, well, I had to produce the whole album and was still doing... Uh, quite a lot of other stuff. I was at that time, I was also teaching quite a lot. Uh, so busy times. Um, but Fold to Pieces was already played by Armin for at least six months at that point. Because it really strange, it, it's, it's a black hole release, but Armin was the biggest supporter in the beginning. I wasn't really uh, aware that Tiesto was, also was picking it up. Because that was always the problem with Tiesto. He was always somewhere in a far away country yeah. doing all the, all kinds of cool things and playing my music a lot but I never really knew about it until way after which is nowadays with all the it would be on Instagram and on TikTok and whatever all the time but back in the days that was still not yeah, it's not that, that, that the DJs were posting stuff themselves all the time that was not really a, a big thing yet mm -hmm. So you never knew what they were doing with your music until way after. So that I found out, oh, there's a new Insert of Sunrise, cool. Oh, and we already put Fault Pieces on it. Almost at the same time that the album was released, which was, yeah. I was like, okay, great. As a great promotion. <laughs> Here we are again. Yeah, yeah. And indeed, I think it's uh, it's certainly one other thing that really helped to, to promote the track and to make it uh, a classic, I think. Uh, but it was never really intended uh, to to be on Sir Well, Sarah. actually, it was kind of intended to be this kind of Sir of Cyrus track if we go back to the original idea of the mm -hmm. instrumental escapism track, because that would be if I would make mix my own Sir of Sunrise, that would have been the intro. It yeah. would be something like that. So it was kind of cool that uh, Jazz Two was uh, following along and with uh, and getting that idea as well. Um, but yeah, it's. Uh, it was never really, I didn't edit it or I didn't yeah. push it or something. It was just like, oh yeah, I'm playing this track and it fits in the, yeah. on the, on the, in the Sur Sunrise mix, so why not? And yeah, yeah really, really cool. Yeah. yeah, because I know there's people that make tracks, especially for Insert of Sunrise. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I used to do that as well. Yeah. Um, I did it for, with Palma Solar, it was really totally targeted at uh, being right. on Insert of Sunrise, yeah. but. At that point, I was it just was. I think it was a bit my se a second nature to make music that kind of fits yeah. uh, in that in that vibe already. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, during the years, there have been a few remixes of uh, photo pieces. Uh, for example, for people such as Andy Jugit, uh, Tale, and Daniel Skyver. Uh, do you have a favorite version yourself? Um, I personally like the Tale version uh, myself. Well. They're all they all have their own strengths, but the Tale version is so different. Uh, I was like, okay, this is also possible, and so that's what I like about it because it wasn't like really um, milking the trancey or it's sort of sunrise part. It was just going nice groove, chilled, and being like casually throwing in the vocals. I, I think it was it was cool. How, I like how casually it just yeah. uses the material. Without really like making a pick, and just like oh, here come the famous vocals you all know. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> some of the sometimes that happens with if you are remixing classics uh, or well or or tracks with vocals that are now well known and that people sing along to make a bit of a show out of it, uh, mm -hmm. like the, the teasing, 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 and here we are. I also like the um, the to share remix. Which is also kind of uh, its own thing. I afterwards I also did a collab with uh, with him, uh, something different. But I think he also did very cool things with it. But all the remixes have their own strengths. Yeah. 
the funny thing is that I never remixed it myself. Yeah, that's uh, one of my questions. Did you yeah. ever try to remix your? So I sometimes start it, and then I'm like, maybe not. <laughs> the thing is, um, I I kind of the, the original is kind of already doing what I wanted to do with it. Although I think it, I never say never. Nowadays I'm in the quite different place again with uh, how I approach music and I start to get some some new ideas that maybe could uh, really work with Volta Pieces to kind of ex- exploit as an early word but to maybe highlight a little bit more that this is a song and to yeah. maybe make a version that is not a dance floor version but more like a nice version to listen that is a bit more poppy that is like really like this is, an, this is a nice song that is working as a song and not just doesn't need to be have have a big drop and uh, be a big dance floor uh, uh, thing yeah yeah. Um, so it might be that I do something like that but it's not it's not that I'm not that you want it I'm not working on it already now but could happen yeah okay so if you could pick whoever you wanted to make a new remix of Fall to Pieces who would you pick then and why <laughs> oh that's so difficult what could be cool is well what I, I now if it's like just a current artist I think what I, I like uh, for example Joos Vorn a lot uh, he's doing a lot of melodic techno nowadays and starts to become more and more of a trans producer every day but I think I would be interested in what he would do with it what could be cool yeah um, but if it's like some something for like for all to have what would be I never actually thought about that. Mm. For me, this is also because for me, Fault P, it was never like a thing to be remixed. It was just yeah, the original or, or version. Yeah, it kind of is one one thing, you know. So, but it, it, I think for current uh, audiences, it could be cool. I think I, I think it would work with the style that Yoos Fon nowadays is doing. Could not could work nicely with those vocals, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, for the rest I, there's nothing that completely immediately pops to mind so that's well he, he can do it he can you can always call me I have the stamps uh, I can email that yeah. <laughs> so can we expect some new material with uh, Jennifer Renee um, actually new material maybe but it's nothing is really uh uh, in the pipeline there but new old material yes I did an art track with Jennifer well actually I have three tracks with Jennifer Fall to Pieces and Pure Bliss which are both on the Born for the Night album and uh, a bit later I did Still I Wait as well um, which I think still has a lot of potential that we didn't really get out of it uh, when it was originally released so uh, very recently like um, at the time of filming this two weeks ago I did a new remix of it and like I already to- said about the folded piece I kind of tried to uh, highlight the, the song of it the song quality not really it, it has a, it, you can use it on the dance floor but it's not really meant as a track for the DJs it's meant as a track for you to listen at home in your car as a nice song uh, uh, so that's the version uh, I made now and then yeah i sent it to black hole and they were like yeah okay great let's release it so we will release that uh, early 2024 um january february maybe march it's in q1 if uh business terms not uh, we're still planning it a little bit but uh, i hope uh, it it will do well i think it's it really uh it's also a pretty great track maybe uh songwriting wise it's maybe even better than fold the pieces although fold the pieces has yeah, a bit of the magic of course but still oh wait I, i'm really i always liked it a lot but at the time i think the version i did was not 100 um, percent so now i want to give it an hour chance yeah. uh, na- another chance and uh, yeah let's see what happens but um yeah i think it's uh it was 
I, I'm pretty enthusiastic about it. So once again, at least one person likes it already. Uh, I will see what happens, but maybe by the time that you're watching this, it could already be out or will be uh, released soon. So keep uh, your ears tuned for that. Yeah, during the years you released a lot of great tracks and remixes. Um, I know this is going to be almost impossible to answer, but what do you consider to be your best track ever? Uh, yeah, well, th I think the most successful track is actually Fall to Pieces. If I look at what what are the current streaming uh, figures, uh, it's I think it's my only track that has more than a couple. That is a couple of million streams. I think what is it nowadays? Getting close to two and a half, three million. Which is pretty cool because it's, I mean, it's a track that was released in 2007 and when Spotify didn't exist yet, so it just added to the platform as a back catalog thing and still getting all these, uh, getting these numbers. So, well, numbers are just numbers, but it means there are always also people behind it that are still listening to the track, which is, of course, uh, as a musician, the only thing that you should, that you should care about. I mean, sharing your music with as many people as possible it's always great um it's just my best production technically i don't think so but this it is it is a pretty good musically i think it's pretty spot on um but i think Castamara and silent waves are basically the versions how they are even if i listen to them today they're i i, I still can't fight much what what I would change about yeah, it. Yeah. Especially in the build-up of Silent Waves, I knew I made this really, really fast. I'm sometimes still wondering, like, how did I come up with it this fast? It's quite excellent. Everything is exactly the perfect length. Mm -hmm. That's the, the way I would do it now. But then, so many years ago. But it's for, actually, it's really difficult. To say. Usually, uh, and that's what a lot of producers would say, it's your latest track yeah. that is the best one. I'm always really uh, enthusiastic about the latest track I created. I was working on the new track uh, just yesterday, and now it's in my mind yeah. like, oh yeah, this is a really good one. But yeah, in hindsight, you you never know. All of them have their uh, their strengths, and sometimes there are, there are things like oh, I could have done this a bit differently. But I think everything that I released, I still like at least a little bit. There's nothing that that I really would like to delete yeah. from history. Uh, but yeah, I think yeah, Fold the Pieces, Custom Mars, Silent Waves. Also probably because the whole story around yeah. it and the success that it had makes it maybe a bit more... <laughs> to plain, makes it a little bit more magic in your head. Uh, I think there's there's some tra tracks I made for the Tales album that I'm also that I also really like that are a li lot more unknown, uh, like uh, the Traverse. Uh, 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 yeah, look, up, check it on Spotify. It's a track from it's already 2010, 2011, I think. That I really still really think great ideas. Um, and yeah, some of the new things. I, yeah, that I love. But let, let's say. One of the one of the three golden oldies are probably the most typical answer. Yeah, yeah. So, so what kind of music do you listen to in your spare time? Um, a little bit of everything. Or oh, that's a boring answer. No, actually, I I have a quite specific taste, which is very broad. But it's not just a little bit of everything. I'm not very much into uh, just whatever random pop music. It has to mean something. What I've been listening to. <laughs> maybe too much of our lot is every album every track that Van Gale has ever made I really I know the most obscure tracks he ever did I've checked it out I'm, I'm a big fan really sad that he uh, left us uh, now because I think he still had some great music uh, in him but too bad I've also listened to almost everything Kraftwerk ever did because I started to really appreciate them only the last few years. I mean, they are already there since forever, but I never really, I think it's because of what I did on, what I, on my YouTube channel that I had to research so much about the history of all the, the dance genres that I started to realize how big the influence of Kraftwerk actually was and is. Uh, and 
really started to listen to their music a lot and analyze it and uh, enjoy it. Yeah. Because, I mean, it's just really good music. Uh, besides that, uh, I listen to quite a lot of house music as well. Uh, techno could be a bit, little bit of everything. Modern um, and also stuff that already was released in the 80s. Uh, I listen to a lot of 90s stuff. Uh, and then it goes crazy from like basically obscure old school Thunderdome tracks that are like my girlfriend doesn't understand how I can listen to it but I I can actually relax listening to these really hard fast tracks lots of noise but for me it's like it brings me in a kind of zen really strange um, also old school Euro dance. Uh, dance classics, classic trance, dr classic drum and bass, pro old school prodigy, especially old school prodigy. I mean, uh, lots of the, all the prodigy stuff is really great, but the, like their old school early rave stuff, mm -hmm. I love it. For example, the track "Wind It Up," yeah, I can be it up. Such a great track, uh, and it it got, and then also what I from time to time. A few years ago I was doing it a lot more, nowadays it depends, classical music as well, and then also a little bit of everything uh, there. Um, I used to grow up, my, my mother is a very big classical music fan and she was, you know, always making us listen, well making us listen, she had, she put on her records and uh, as we, as I, as my brothers, when we were small, we just absorbed all this, it was like things like Tchaikovsky and such, uh, and Beethoven. And yeah, I can still enjoy it uh, a lot, especially I like Beethoven quite a lot. It's amazing stuff, uh, almost everything, especially the symphonies. Uh, I kind of like a little bit of the drama, the dramatic stuff of Beethoven. He has also lots of piano sonatas, which are nice, but they don't influence me that much. And they, I, yeah, I like them, but I don't listen to them that much, which is, you would think like, oh, mate, that's a lot more closer to connected to trance stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh, because actually, there, I think there are trans tracks that are basically using those uh, those compositions as a base. But I like the more dramatic symphonic stuff a lot more, uh, like the Fifth Symphony, and uh, not only the beginning, not, but also all the other, yeah, yeah. The, the the second and the third uh, part, uh, great. So all that kind of stuff. Uh, what I don't care about at all is most of the modern pop stuff. Not that I. This like oh no it's new so but I think now uh, lately there has been lots of um, like kind of rehashes of the old yeah. 90s tracks. For example, suddenly there's a track that is based on Hathaway, What Is Love. I here behind us uh, they are building new houses and in the summer they're playing the radio all day and then you know I hear those those tracks as well and I was like is this Hathaway? No, is this something new? There's also some, a, a track that is based on Better of Alone uh, and, and, and some Robin Miles uh, bass tracks. Uh, and I was like, yeah, I have one word, why? Yeah. Is this, was this needed? If you want to listen to these old sounds or these old melodies, great. But just listen to the originals. Yeah, yeah. That's what I do. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that I don't really care about. And yeah. For the rest, uh, it depends. Just the, the more generic rock pop stuff. Uh, I've never really been into that much, but just because I, I think just I don't really have a like real a connection. connection with that. What I do still like from time to time, uh, and which I started to appreciate a lot more also when doing some of the 90s videos, is old school hip hop and old school. Uh, dubbed reggae stuff even especially when i was doing the speed garage and drum and bass videos i was researching where do they sample all the stuff from and then you get these uh, raga muffin stuff and it's just like there's a lot of you know raw energy in it and i can't listen to it all day long but from time to time i like it as well and then of course the classic hip-hop yeah. stuff by dr dre and, and snoop dogg and such uh, when i when it was new my younger brothers they were into it a lot and they were playing it all day long and i was like here we go again but apparently it stayed somewhere in the back of my mind like oh this is pretty good so now when you know 
when you put on an old track like California Love or something oh, yeah. like that. I'm still, I like, yeah. That was I'm into this. Uh, let's let's do some more. So it goes really well. It's it's quite it's specific, I think, because it's not just any music, but it has it goes from classical to hip or to thunder hill. And I think in all of it, I find I can really appreciate it for different reasons. But I always uh, there. I think they're all interesting music yeah, at least, yeah, that's and cool. it really helps me to come up with my ideas as well yeah. to have this big uh, broad horizon to you know sample ideas from yeah. because that's basically what everyone is doing uh, when you're making music yeah they get inspired it, yeah, yeah. You're, you're never really isolated uh, yeah. when you're doing that's that true. kind of stuff yeah well thanks all for your time and good luck with everything yeah my pleasure all right, that was it. This week's log, the story behind Fall to Pieces, my interview with Jonas Steur. Jonas, thanks a lot for your time. Much appreciated. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the vlog. If you did, make sure to give this video a like, leave a comment in the comment section below, and very important, make sure to subscribe. Also make sure to click the bell button because then you will get a notification the next time a new vlog is online. And in case you missed it, I did two more interviews with Jonas. Both of those are online already. In the first one, I spoke to Jonas about his track Castamara. And in the second one, you will hear the story behind the Estuera classic, Tales from the South. So make sure to check them out. Once again, thanks for watching and until next time, bye bye.